Hello, I'm Ian Livingstone. I'm the Life President of IDOS, the home of Lara Croft. Making games is a very complicated process. When you make a film, uh, you know pretty much what you have to do. You have to shoot the footage and you can do that and you look at it quite quickly and make a decision whether or not it's, it's acceptable. Then in the editing room, you just chop it all up and hey presto, your, your movie's there. Game is an ethereal process. You don't see much of what you're doing for quite a long time. There's another misconception about games from the starting block. Is that I think a lot of people think it's two blokes in a garage can make a game for about 10,000 quid. Mm. The fact of the matter is if you're making a blockbuster title like Tomb Raider, it costs between 15 and 20 million pounds to make a game. Mm. It's 150 people taking two years, so that's a long time. And if there's any problems along the way, you know, that, that actually moves it out one month, two months, three months. But you don't want to ship a game which is suboptimal. You want it to be the best it can be. Because you've invested so much time and money, it's pointless putting it out when it's not ready for market. So this is called slippage, but it's it's manageable, and you know it just goes it just goes with the, with the show. Okay. Uh, you just have to do things from a professional point of view. I mean, that just sounds a bit sort of benign comment, but. You've got to have the right people in the right place mm. doing the right things. The project management part has been an area in games that has probably been neglected a little bit because from the point of view that games have budgets have increased mm. exponentially over time from this £10,000 to the £20 million. Pounds. And yet the producers have been largely the same. So you can't expect someone who's managing a £10,000 P&L to suddenly handle a £15, £20 million pound P&L mm. with the same sort of uh, abilities. So we're going to have to get people from outside of the industry uh, to be more involved in the production side. Not only that, we need people from outside the industry, from marketing, from legal, from administration, because you know, this is quite a serious business now. You know, games represent software sales alone of £20 billion pounds a year. It's, it's bigger than box office receipts, it's catching up music. Yeah. It's the preferred entertainment choice of, of many people. And it's a very sophisticated process, but it takes huge teams uh, which need managing to budget and schedule of, of individuals. So you need 3D programmers, 2D programmers, artificial intelligence programmers, artists, animators, um, uh, music, sound, dialogue, lighting, camera, uh, rendering. Uh, there's so many skills in making a game, it's almost scary. Yeah. <laughs> so in fact, it's a nightmare business, yeah. but uh, if you get it right, it's very, very rewarding. Well, I, I think a, a charter of some kind would, but we're more concerned with programming rather than IT. We need people who can not just operate a computer, but we need, need people who can actually program computers. Yeah. So it's a, it's a slightly different skill set. It's not so much on the operational point, but it's on the, on the programming front. Mm -hmm. And the same with art and animation. But if there's a charter for those skills, then we would welcome it. As long as it l works alongside the courses that we're trying to support within skill set, mm. um, because we've, we've worked hard, you know, skill sets worked hard with industry to set a criteria which meets all the needs of, of industry. So if it can work alongside that, then that would be great. Mm.